Bonjour tout le monde and welcome to this video. As you can see the setup is just a little bit different to usual today and that's because I'm making the first of what I hope will be many videos on my favourite French language learning resources. And in this first instalment we begin with absolutely the best French language application in the universe. Okay, This is the English to French, French to English La Rousse Dictionary. And I have to say, La Rousse has not paid me to say this, unfortunately. So this is pure emotion. I love this app with all my heart. It is by far the most used application on my iPod, which just goes to show how much of an interesting person I am. And I cannot recommend it to you enough. So, some practical information. This is available on the App Store, and I also believe it's available on Android. I can't tell you how much it costs. Um, on the Play Store because I don't have an Android phone anymore, but on the App Store it is £3.99. If you're in America that's $4.99 and in Europe it's €4.99. So as far as apps go, for me anyway that's quite expensive. I don't often pay for apps, let alone £4. But trust me, it is absolutely worth it. I have this version of the app, I have the German version, I have the French-Italian version, and I have the French-Chinese version, because I'm absolutely in love. That said, if you are thinking of getting another version for a different language, they do loads of languages, Spanish, Arabic, this one is the best. The other ones, they have limited capabilities, they don't do quite as much as this one does. This one is definitely the one they've worked the hardest on, but that said, it is really worth getting any of them, trust me. So why is this application so good? Let me take you through some of the processes and we'll see. So it's quite easy to use. This is not a tutorial. I'm sure you can figure this out, but let's just have a look. Let's look up a word in English. I don't know. Umbrella. Of course, if you're watching this video, you should already know the French word for umbrella. At least I hope you do. But just for the sake of example, let's look at this word. And as you can see, this is the first thing that I want to comment on, the fact that there are three entries, and each of those will have sub-entries. Three entries for the word umbrella. If I were writing a dictionary, there would be one entry, thing that you put up when it's raining. But no, La Rousse goes a couple of extra steps further and gives us more. So we have the noun, the compound, and umbrella stand. The dictionary also has phrases as well as just individual sentences. So if there's a two-word phrase, you can quite often find it in here. And if you can't find it in here, at this stage, you probably will find it later on. So let's just have a look at the simple translation here. As you can see, wonderful design. It's very smooth. And I quite often find that these foreign language dictionaries, they try a little bit too hard. They just put in all these graphics that you don't want. Or they're kind of boring. I find this a perfect balance of the two. It's not trying too hard by just throwing in all the animations it can possibly find, but then at the same time it's not boring. It is visually appealing. Of course, we have the word at the top, umbrella, accompanied by an IPA transcription. Always good. I do love a bit of IPA. Then we have the fact that it's a noun, which is good because of course some words can be nouns or verbs. And here we have the sub-entries, starting with the most logical, of course, parapluie, the fact that it's masculine, good to know, and then an example sentence, and we'll see later on, the example sentences in this dictionary are endless. There are thousands, and it is brilliant, because it means we're not just learning words in isolation, we're learning how to use them in a sentence, which is always good. And it's always a useful sentence as well, so here we have to put up or to put down an umbrella. It's not just some random sentence that no one is ever going to say, it's practical. Then we have these kind of obscure translations. We've got figurative protection or cover, uh, military. I mean, who knew the military used umbrellas? I, pff, not a clue. And the umbrella of a jellyfish is une ombrelle, apparently. So there we go, all the translations you could possibly need, and then some. Of course, the dictionary works in the other way as well. So let's say we want to look up a French word, something simple like mettre. There we go. Tells us that it's a transitive verb again. IPA transcription, always good. But the absolute icing on the cake is this. Maître. Audio recordings. Now, you do need a Wi-Fi connection for that to work. So if you're offline, you might need to rely on the IPA. But oh my goodness, audio recordings for everything. For example. Maître, 
Even the example sentences have audio recordings. Even the English ones too. To put one's trust or one's hopes in. I think Audrey Hepburn may have uh, recorded that one. You can see they kind of sound a little bit robotic, but they're better than something like Google Translate. I can't quite decide with this one whether they've got some amazing text-to-speech software. It is really quite impressive when you compare it to something like Google Translate, or if they've just got some really robotic-sounding people. Like I said, that one sounded a little bit like Audrey Hepburn. Sometimes they have men, sometimes they have women, which is good for a little bit of variety. And as you can see, the entries for this... I mean, maître is a particularly versatile word, but this is a common sight in this dictionary, which of course means sometimes you do have to do a little bit of searching, but, I mean, you've got every single use of this word that you could possibly ever need, okay? It is amazing, okay? And then, just to top it all off, we have the conjugation button, and there we go, every single conjugation of every single verb in this dictionary that you could possibly need indicatives, subjunctives, participles, conditional, infinitives, then all the passive forms of all of those. I mean, I'm just amazed by that. I've had this application for years and it still never ceases to amaze me. It is brilliant. Then, as an added bonus, we've got um, the favourite feature, or I think the bookmark feature rather, so if you press the star, you can then put it into your bookmarks to come back to it later. I've put quite a few words in here, some very old ones I should imagine. Okay, so you know if you need to find it quickly again or perhaps you you remember looking up a word but you can't remember what it was then uh, you can look it up in your bookmark. You've also got the history feature as well, so it's a similar kind of thing. Oh I know I looked up a word earlier on, what was it? Here we go, we can have a look in the history. So there we go, that's about it. At the end of the day this is just a dictionary, there's not really much more I can say about it. But it is absolutely amazing. I cannot recommend it to you anymore. Of course, I always recommend that you have a physical paper dictionary as well. I'm all for those. But I wouldn't judge you if you just stuck with this because it is absolutely fantastic. Of course, if you have any questions about it that I've not answered in this video, then please do leave a comment. I know for me, spending £3.99 on this was a big decision. Okay, As I said earlier on, I don't often pay for apps. Trust me, it is worth it. But... If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask, and I will see you in the next video. A bientôt!